Your audio? Hey, hey. You sure? How did that happen? Yeah? We're on? Hey, there's Tom. Hey. Tom. <laughs> All right, everyone's coming back in. All hey. Right. When do I, should I start? Let's go for it, baby. Yeah, what do I do? Take it from the top? Minnie, how's my hair look? <laughs> got makeup. Makeup. <laughs> Big D, you okay? I'm okay. All I right. I think everything else is okay now. Unit, so. you okay? Minnie, you good? Okay, and don't forget, hey, Brent, you still online? I'm hoping, brother. Yay, Steve here, Sound in Bermuda. Let's roll, baby. Let's roll. Okay. So, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is kind of cool. Happy Festival Friday, everybody. Uh, the crew's in the house. We got Big D, we got Chris, we got Minnie, we got Brent online. Uh, YouTube is where we're at. There was a hiccup on YouTube, I think. Was it being our friend this morning? It wasn't being our friend again today, but we're good like that. I kind of like that. Instagram and Facebook, this will live for a long, long time. Don't forget to subscribe to everybody. I'm going to say it again. Minnie is back from her Geography World Tour. Woohoo! So she's been writing on the board. Hopefully you guys are all coming back in. Tell us where you're from. Uh, she ended up in Apopka, Florida. And that is the floral capital of the universe. And it's where a lot of our friends are uh, at Central Florida Cabinet Supplies. That was the CFC it stands for. I want to shout out. I was wicked jealous. Minnie was there. Okay, so I usually call out a department here at Festool. And today I'm going to call out an individual because he's leaving uh, Festool North America to go back to Germany. His name is Johannes Frick. He is a brother of mine. We share the same birthday. Um, I've known him since 2007 and just one of the most wonderful human, human beings on the planet. We all miss you, Johannes, already. He's working till next week sometime. I think he's actually moving part of his stuff today. Um, I'll say it once more, Johannes. We love you. Okay, so this is episode number 52. And we're going to talk about bending wood by curve cutting it. Okay, now, why do you bend wood? <laughs> A variety of reasons. Well, you can bend wood by steam bending or doing uh, bent laminations by really cutting a bunch of thin strips. And guess what? Someday we'll do that on Festool Live. But what I want to what I want to show you today is how to remove. So this is a typical piece of plywood. How to remove by making multiple passes with either a track saw or a capex to, in the curve cutting, is the curve of the blade, the thickness of the blade, which is 2.2 millimeter. So you can take it and bend it like this. Now, there's a variety of ways to do this. I used to do this on my table saw when I used to use the table saw way back when. But boy, when I first saw the track saw, and mine was an ATF-55, I really saw the benefits of curve cutting because this is what I used to do all the time. I used to sell things because I used to do toe kicks with a radius like this. Okay, and I used to cut curves, and I used to take that piece of that toe kick and run it across my table saw like this. Okay, creating those what one eighth increment curves to bend it. There's a variety of we reasons you bend, like to do a column. I did this round piece, okay, and you can see it, curve cutting, right? I did this spiral here. So think about it. You could take your capex or your track saw do multiple passes, but you also, with the MFT, can set your, your fence to get that 22 and a half degrees. So today what I want to do is just kind of open up your brains to see the possibilities when you're bending wood with the Festool system. Hey, here's another one. This is just a half-inch piece of plywood, but if you check it out, check out those radiuses right there. Pretty cool, huh? So I, just, I thought I'd show you a couple examples of curve cutting. The majority of the way, the majority of the time I ever did it was pretty simple, was to cut um, uh, uh, a 90 or a radius for a 90. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step through a few things and show you a couple things about the track saw and the capex. And I also got a couple ways of indexing this so you can see this. Okay, so <coughs> you got to set your depth precisely. And what I'm going to do, and when you do any of this, everybody, Okay, always, always make sure you unplug it when you're adjusting things. It makes it, just just be safe, please. Okay, so 
<clears throat> this is three-quarter ply, what I'm going to do. This is basically the center line. I made a couple of marks here so I know when to start it and stop it. But I measured it from the center line of where I wanted to bend, about 32 millimeters, and there's a reason for that. Okay. Do you know the reason? <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you? Do you, Big D? Well, Why I, was, I, I was gonna say everything is built on the 32 millimeter system. Okay, no, no, no. no. It's a, it's I'm gonna do eight cuts. Oh. Okay, but I also got to calculate in there what. The thickness of the blade. Uh huh. So there you go. Gotcha. So I just I did a couple of quick measurements yesterday just to, so I could do that. For me, with the blade off of center line, I do four and then four. So what I'm gonna show you is this. I took. And I had this is this is basically 150 millimeters wide, but what I want to do is I I set it on here to make sure it's really flat. I don't want it at a ramp. So what I did is I took another piece of three quarter the same material, had it back here, and I made sure that the pin is in here the um, the back groove of the track. So I'm going to set it down here like this, and now I got to set depth. So what I'll do is I'll take it like this. I make sure my cams are nice that there's no lateral movement in there. And then I'm going to take it, and I'm going to set my depth. And I'm going to use this scale here, OK? I'm going to take this. And you see where it says FS? There's my 3 quarter cut, right? But I want to go a little bit shy. So let's take a test cut to see where we're at. And then w I can show you how to micro adjust it so you can bend it right off of the veneer. All right? We'll make some cuts. Now. <coughs> the thing, you, yes, you can do this, and then I'll say it again, with a table saw, and you probably have done that out there. But here's the situation. This is a lot safer, but it's a lot quicker, and you'll see why in a few minutes. So I'm just going to take this and do a test cut here so you can see it. Okay, so that's pretty good, but let's look at it. Let's see how we've dialed it in. You can see, okay, that's really close to the veneer. So the things I look at a little bit are I don't want it too close. When I bend it, I don't want it to transfer through. So I may, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to micro adjust this now. So it's pretty simple. Let's look in here, Chris. Come on. See this right here? This is your micro adjustment. So if I go this way with it, I can bring that depth stop up. If I go the other way, and you can feel it, OK? So what I, I'll always do is my, my hands are really big. They're, uh, not big. They're just, I got thick. I, I got 10 thumbs. If we look right on the top here, check it out. That's a 5 millimeter hex, and I can actually dial it in just like that. OK? So I thought I'd show you. That's why micro adjustment. I'm going to make another cut, and let's eyeball it. I'll bring it right back here. Always do test cuts, everybody. Okay, you're going to see it's a little more stout down there. See how that's closer and that's a little bit thicker? Is that coming through? I can't oh, yeah. see fr out oh, front. Good. I just want to make sure. Yep, just a little bit. I'm looking at it. Yep, it's exactly where I want it, so I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to bring it down, and, and I'm just going to bring it right over to my Mac here. And here's why I will tell you it's quicker. I can keep the machine running. Now, <coughs> whenever I've showed people how to do this in classes, they go, how are you indexing? How are you getting it exactly spaced perfectly? I'm not. <laughs> OK? But what I'll do is I'll take my hand and put it right here. And as I'm running it, OK, I'll just eyeball it. And you get, believe it or not, you get and a pretty good rhythm of cutting. Sometimes I'll push it a little too far, and I'll have to move it back. But if you just creep on it like this, it works pretty good. So I'm going to make that amount of cuts to see where we're at. And I'm going to see the bendability of this. And as you see it, OK, see, OK, now look. This is why I can, I can tell you, you, it's a little bit of back and forth. That's not quite enough, because you'll see that's not 90. So what I'll do is I'll just bring it back down here and continue for a few more cuts. It's that simple, but it's quick, all right? And the other thing that's unbelievable is there's barely any dust, too, right? So I think it's about two more cuts. And you know what I'll do? I'll do one more for insurance. 
Woo! So there we go. Always pushing it all the way through. And check, there's your 90. There it is. Pretty cool, huh? Yep. So here's what I see all the time. People go, well, how do you keep it in that form? So yesterday I was showing Chris this. What I like to do <coughs> is I like to take glue, and I'll put it in here. And you don't have to fill it because if you check this out, it's only going to hit at the very top. Okay? Glue is brittle. So what I've done in the past, I put glue in here. I take some blue tape to hold it at 90. I bring my square right here. Okay? And then what happens is I let that glue set for quite some time. <coughs> and if I need to fill, I use a little bit of epoxy. Like, Chris, you're good with the cord. I'm just going to sneak right over here so you can see this. I filled this with a little CA glue yesterday, and I actually smoothed it out a little bit so you can see that kick. You can use any epoxy to fill that if need be. But with toe kicks that I've done in the past, I just put uh, regular uh, wood glue in there because I brace it after with other pieces. Okay, No one's ever going to see the bracing as I put my cabinets on top. All right. So that's how you do it with the TS-55. You can do it with the TS-75 as well, okay? Um, now what I want to do is I want to show you how to do this with the Capex. So follow me over here. And <coughs> you remember the micro adjust on the TS-55? You have that. Watch. This is your depth of cut, okay? See this green knob right here? If I pull this forward... That allows me, and you'll see, look, right here. Chris, can you make sure you get this right here? I can adjust the depth of this. See that? Okay, so what I'm going to do is, and this is where you got to be really careful with this, okay, is I get, I'm going to check my piece first to see. Let me just grab this. I'm going to bring it down because I just ruined my adjustment. Okay, now I want to look at this. And you see how close that is? Okay, it's very, very thin. That's too thin for me. So, oh, I'm sorry, Chris. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to turn it to bring it up. And I'm going to do a full turn. Okay, so that's a little too much. Okay, so I'm going to go back now and give it a half a turn back, and let's verify once you set this up, just take your time because you want it just right. But once you set it up, you're good to go. All right? So look. Okay, so that's going to be just about right for me. I am going to go a hair deeper, and let's rock and roll. Now, here's what I want to point out. If I was cutting this piece or notching this piece like this, that if I had that right up against the fence, I would leave some of the geometry of the blade in there. See that? So I heard somebody one time say to say this, oh, I go one way and then I flip my board around. See how it doesn't come all the way through on here? And then I flip it around and go this way. And I said, that is wasting too much time. What you need to do is build yourself a sacrificial fence that this now rests up against it. Hopefully you'll all follow me. But... The other thing I want to show you is this. See this notch in here? I cut this yesterday. Okay, I'm going to bring it in and now lock it in. Because hopefully you can see this. Big D, can you get that? You see that line right there? That's my indexing Mac. And I want to show you how it works. Okay, I'm going to bring my board over here like this. Okay, and I'm going to bring it all the way in. And see how I can index it right there? So I can get equal spacing just the way I want it. And I'll tell you what, I'm removing quite a bit of material here, and the dust extraction is exceptional. So that's how you bend on the capex, just like that. Okay? Now... The other thing is, you see this spiral right here? Let me see if I can take this, move it, so you can actually see it, okay? I'm doing the same spacing. Look how even that is. 
But the thing is, is I'm setting my saw. I'll show you this. It's a different fence. And I wanted to, I wanted to point this out because I think this is pretty slick. Okay. I'm going to set this at 22 and a half right here. Lock it in. And I bring my blade in just like this to set it up. And you can do the exact same thing. Now, the nice thing about the Capex hold down is you have these flat spots. So I could take that and bring it right against the fence to get that locked down. Just perfect, okay? It gets you where you need that 90 degree pressure. So I'm gonna bring this in now, okay? And once again, check it out. See how I can index that? Nice and easy. Now, the nice thing about this is just like the track saw, I don't have to stop and start the motor. I can do a continuous run, so it really speeds that up. A little bit of glue, and you're bending wood. <laughs> cool. So, that's curve cutting. <laughs> and, and I'll show you something. One more thing I want to show you. Because everybody wants, I, uh, I had a piece in here one time. And somebody said, how do, you, how do you know how to, where to cut? And it's pretty simple. You measure where you want it, right from here to here. You know your center here. So if you really think about this, you could do a four-piece by just measuring and knowing where to cut, right? So someone said, how did you connect this? And this is simple. It's just a domino that I dominoed after. Okay? And you just put it right together like this. If this is, seems a little too flat, I can cut my domino down glue it up. You could do column wraps like this, everything. You could do tapered wraps. <laughs> Derek just went, Poof. okay, everybody. Um, I just want to say one thing before we wrap up and tell everybody where you're from. I want to apologize for the sound. We finally got it. I am so daggone proud of this live team. We've had hiccups over the year, and guess what? Hopefully, you, oh my God, look at all the people, Min Min. Uh, we love you because you hang in there with us. And sometimes the hiccups are kind of fun. We apologize if it confuses you. We're really working on it. We're getting some more equipment in. Hey, we got Mini back. That was a start, huh? So, yes, sir. <coughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but this is pretty much my favorite part of this because we get to find out where everybody's from, huh? Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm telling you, I'm trying to practice these names. Minnie's been helping me. Okay, we're going to start out with Fenton, Michigan, Halmstead, Sweden, Princeton, West Virginia, Tom and Kelly from Eatonton, Georgia. How are you? Ian from East Yorkshire. How are you doing, my brother from another mother? Lancaster, PA, Lausanne, Switzerland, Batavia, Ohio. Batavia. Thank you, Min Min. Malta. Christopher, how are you? Netherlands. Tupac from Netherlands. Montreal. Canada. Not California. <laughs> Whitestone, New York. Hatch End, UK. Columbus, Ohio. Don from Albuquerque. Tokyo. Times two. Edmonton, Alberta. Yakult, West... What's that? Washington. Okay. Southern California. Berlin, Germany. Finley, Ohio. Gross, Illinois... Michigan. Gr what's this, Min? Gr gross what? I don't know. Gross Ill, Michigan. Okay. Woo! Fayetteville, Georgia. Helena, Alabama. We got Kent, UK. Not Kent, the Kent I know from uh, Zionsville. Bermuda, Belgium, Paris, France, Charleston, West Virginia, New Orleans, County Mayo, Iceland, or Co Mayo, Iceland, Springfield, Ohio, Salina, Kansas, Birmingham, Paramaribo, Suriname. Wow, everybody, eh? Okay, Aurora, Ontario, Wolfgang from Vienna, Austria. How you doing, Wolfgang? Bumpus, Virginia, Helena, Montana. Wow, we have a lot of Helenas, Helenas, huh? Okay, Salt Lake City, Utah, Jefferson City, Missouri, Barry, Mass. Massachusetts, <laughs> Union, Maine, yes, sir. Annapolis, Maryland, La Mesa, Lumba, Inglewood, California, Madison, Wisconsin, Greg from Belgium, Katie, Texas, Klein, Pampau, Germany, and I know I mispronounced that, <laughs> okay, 
Halifax, Nova Scotia. What a great place. Jasper, Indiana. Dela hey, Delaware. We're Woo! in Delaware. Yo, okay. Yo, Larvi, Finland. I practiced that one for days. Wallingford, Connecticut. Hawaii. Cala, Columbia. South America. Ottawa. Tinglingham, Essex, England. British Virgin Islands, Bloomington, Indiana, go IU, Boucherville, Quebec, Kentucky. We got more men. <coughs> okay, Yarvis, Sweden, Dulik, Ireland. <sighs> Same number of curves on both sides of the line you draw. If that bend you want on the center line, yes. Okay, you probably noticed I didn't because <laughs> I wasn't bending it. I miscalculated it, but I apologize. But I usually try to do, if I'm on that center line, I try to do the same number on that because what that does is it, al it allows those pieces or the top of those curves to mate to join with the wood glue because the, the wood has to hit the wood. If not, you have spaces in there, and it's not as critical because you can epoxy it after. So hopefully that answered the question. We good? All right. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in and for hanging in there because we finally got it. Oh, uh, I think this is going to be a half hour one. Yeah, that's all right. Even with the delay. We did good. Way to hang in there, gang. I love everybody. Thank you, Brent, for hanging. Thanks for everybody. We love you. Have a fantastic weekend. It's springtime in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll, baby.